to Brian now. Look, no cord. Meet Phillips Filler Shave Cordless Shaver. Phillips Filler Shave Cordless, the new shaver for the man on the moon. Use it anywhere. In the car, in the train, on a yacht, on a plane, on holidays in the office before that important date. Filler Shave Cordless comes in a pocket-sized zipper case with built-in mirror. Fits any overnight bag, briefcase or car glove compartment. And Filler Shave Cordless is completely independent. Operates on four tiny batteries. Look, no cord. Filler Shave Cordless has famous rotary action, of course. Rotary action makes Filler Shave the very best way to shave. Now, Filler Shave introduces Cordless for the man on the moon at only £9.70 and six. In the world of electronics, it's Philips for lasting value. This is a 1950s Philips Philly Tone, as opposed to the Philly Shave, extension radio speaker. A couple of points to note. The original um, nuts and threaded rod, I only have provisions for one side. That's how it was, however, you could always put them straight on the front for that authentic look and put a, an ordinary screw on the back. However, I, uh, I upgraded it to metric <clears throat> because I am a stickler for things to be even on both sides. Um, a metric counterpart which have the same profile as these. I suppose you could even slip that with a Dremel to create one of these. Uh, they have, yeah, so they're the, the same profile in a metric version. Uh, and the threaded rod I've used in there is obviously metric. However, the threaded rod I used had a head on one side. So I used a couple of washers. And um, yeah, that's that. I suppose at the end of the day, a Phillips head screw belongs on a Phillips speaker more so than a flathead but anyway <clears throat> so there's not much wrong with it apart from a crack here on the underside which doesn't det detract from its presentation on a display shelf and uh, two little holes in the speaker cloth one with rust and one without and a little hole here, which uh, if you see in one of the photos in the listing, is a perfectly round hole. However, it's crumbled a bit on the outside. I would imagine it would be original because it would be very difficult to drill through uh, the cabinet or the case at that point, half of the drill being on the upper lip and half there. It, you know, I mean, if, if if one was going to put a hole in it, why would you? There's a hole here. That's the original hole for the cable. And if you had to, I suppose if you really wanted to, why wouldn't you put one here? So I would imagine that either that's part of the mould or it was drilled at the factory or perhaps this speaker had a different use in a previous life. Perhaps it was used in a telephone exchange or something. Who knows? I don't know. But anyway, that's uh, all I can see that would be a problem on this little unit. It presents very well and has done so on my kitchen dresser for a number of years now. In fact, with a house full of radios, it gets probably the most attention. And mostly from people who don't collect think it's quite cute. But it's, uh, it's about 20 centimetres in diameter and about... 12 centimeters in depth so there you have it it's a 60 year old ext extension speaker in green bakelite thanks for watching